Hello everyone, this is Prem Kumar. Welcome to one another video on Pega Beginner Playlist. In this video, we are going to talk about defining case stages, case processes and then case steps. If you take the claims request processing, the case it can be divided into four stages. The first stage we can collect the information and in the second stage we can validate and send the case to the investigation department and in the third stage it can go to the manager approval and when the manager approved then it can go to the fourth stage where we can do the payment settlement. So we will define all these four stages into the Pegas case designer and we will also look into the configurations that is available per each stage. Once we define the stage we can drill down further to go into creating processes under each stage. For example, if you look at the first stage on collect information, there I can have two processes. I can have a collection processes where I can collect the customer details as well as the policy details. And in the second process, I can have some kind of duplicate check. By this way, under one stage, you can have one or more multiple processes. Once you defined all your necessary processes, then you can define steps under each process. Like you see in the collection, I can have two steps of collecting customer details as well as collecting the policy details. So under each process, you can have one or more steps defined. And finally, we can also define the alternate stage if the manager rejects the case. So this video is going to be more like a basic video where we are going to look into different configurations on stages and process steps and then we will also define an alternate stage. Let's go into the designer studio. So from here in the left panel, I opened the case type and click on it to open the case designer. So by default, you see there is a stage appended that is called create. From Pega 8.5 version, as soon as you create a Pega case, you see this default stage. So why did Pega auto created this create stage? It was never there before the 8.5 version. Create stage tends to capture the initial data before any case processing starts. You can modify the stage to meet the business needs. You can also rename the create stage. I'm going to say collect information instead of create stage. But you cannot delete this stage. Then my next stage can be investigation and then we can go with approval and the fourth stage can be settlement. Occasionally you can also have a final stage called closing where you can resolve the case. So I have created five stages for this case type. Now let's look at the configuration of a stage. Just click on any stage and in the right side you will see the configuration for a stage. There are three main tabs general validation and goal and deadline. So under the general tab, you can decide what to do when all the process in the stage gets completed. So you can automatically move to the next stage or you can wait for an user action or else you can resolve the case. So automatically move to the next stage will be the ideal thing when you want to automatically go to the next stage when a current stage is completed. But there may be some situation where you need to wait before you enter into next stage. So in that case, we can say wait for a user action. And finally, we can also resolve the case. Usually the resolving the case, we can use it at the last stage. So at the last stage, once all the process gets completed, you're not going to move to the next stage because there is no stage. You're not going to wait for user action because this is the closing stage. So what you can do here is resolve the stage and give the status. So case status, we have it in a separate lecture, but you can say it as resolved completed. It means the case has been resolved. You also have two other options, like you can delete open assignments. So there can be some kind of parallel processing or there can be some open assignments waiting for some other user for execution or some other user may need to work on the case, but you can close the case even if there are some open work assigned. So in that case, what you can do is you can delete all the open assignments. As a best practice, you can always delete these open assignments because when a case gets resolved and you have some open assignments, maybe the assignment can be treated like an orphaned assignment because the case is already closed or completed. In that case, you don't need to have any open work waiting for any user on that special case. 
the next is resolve open child case so this option also what you can do is when you have child cases and when a parent case is resolved you can also use this option to resolve all the child cases pega by default don't enable this option so use it only when necessary next tab is validation so under validation you can define some entry level validation for example let's say if we want to enter into the investigation stage then you must have collected all the necessary documentation you can create a validate rule which is a separate rule in pega that can helps to write some validation code so you can use that rule here or else you can also use some attachments you can add required attachments that is necessary for a stage entry so from here you can select what type of attachments that is needed currently it is empty because we don't have any attachment category but just understand that to enter into your stage you can have some kind of validation configured at the stage level and finally goal and deadline so you can define an sla for a stage let's say this investigation stage should be completed within 7 days so this is the sla you defined for a stage so sla stands for service level agreement it is like a time based completion of a stage so now you can define a goal and deadline so goal and deadline the main difference is goal can be like 3 uh, days then you can extend the deadline for four more days something like that but you will uh, see more in detail about sla in a separate lecture for now i just wanted to make it little bit simple so you can either define a service level agreement a goal deadline time for the stage to complete using a existing sla rule which is a rule in pega or you can also create a new sla rule using the custom sla option so here you can define the goal and deadline like how long this stage should be completed what is the maximum duration and if it exceeds what you can do you can notify some people and these are the configurations which you can do in a stage designer so now we are comfortable with configuring a stage now let's go one step below and configure processes for each stage so you see collect information already a process is defined create so similarly for investigation we can define process for approval we have to define process and then settlement also we can define a process so how to define a process you can't click and add from here instead you have to go to the three dot and from here you can add a process so adding a process you can just add a new process or you can add a new multi step form process so technically this translate into creating a new flow or creating a screen flow so screen flow in the sense like if you want to capture information lot of information you can break the screens into multiple uh, steps so multiple screens you can navigate back and forth again screen flow is a separate lecture let's keep it simple you can add new process under each stage for now i'm going to keep it as a very simple process so click on the new process and that will create a new process let this be on site investigation this is my process flow and for now i'm going to delete this uh, step let's just create only the process by default pega populates an assignment step we can always delete it no problem with that then in the approval you can add a new process you can call it approve or reject and again i will delete this step and finally you can say settlement you can add a new process and call it payment settlement i will clear out this step let the final stage be without any process as soon as the case enters into the closing stage it will be resolved so just save it now so what we did now is first we created the stages and then we defined processes for each stage now let's look at the configurations on each process so you can click on the process there you find on the right hand side the configurations so here you can see under the general tab you can say when to start this process so you can say always it starts the process without any condition if your case enters to this stage then it gets started but you can also define it based on some when rule so when is like a condition check you can think it of java like if logic right similarly you can say when some conditions comes to true then you can execute uh, this process similarly for expression also when this expression equals to true like a equal to b then you can uh, execute or start this process so these are the general condition and then in goal and deadline just we saw about the goal and deadline or the sla configuration for stage 
Similarly, you can also define SLAs for processes so that you can have a time bound limit for the processes. Say like within seven days, this process should get completed. Then we can define an SLA for this process. So these are all the configurations on a process level. Now let's go one more level deep and add steps. As you can see in the create process, we already have a work step added, which is of assignment. There are multiple steps. So you can just click here on step. There you will find the out of the box steps, which you can just plug it there. So collect information is basically to collect the information and multi-step form is also can be used as collect information, but on a multi-step. As you can see from this process, this process is of type multi-step process. That is why you can add only form step from here. You cannot add any other step apart from form step or collect information step. But for a normal process, any type of step, but for multi-form process, you can just add only the form step. Now let's go ahead and check the other process. So approve and reject, we already have a step of approve or reject. You don't want to do any type of big coding. All you have to do is use the approve and reject in the approval stage and then just do some configuration. There are other steps as well. Let's quickly look into the other steps. Under processes, you can include the existing processes that are available in the system. User actions. So under user actions, you can define the out of the box user actions that can be performed. Like you can change the goal, you can change to different stage or you can edit the details. These are all the out of the box steps which you can use it. So by this way, if you use any user actions, the case will come and wait and then it needs some user action to proceed further. There are also some automation steps. So for this, there is no user involved. It just do some kind of automation steps. For example, sending out email, you don't want an end user to come and click some button to send an email. So you can use the shape and that will automatically send email. As I said, send email is an automated step, but you have a lot of automated step and you can also use DocuSign. You can search for duplicate cases. You can push notification to mobile. You can save the case. You can just explore all these uh, automated steps. Wait is one of the important step which we use. Again, we have it in a separate lecture to look on this wait shape. So you can keep on adding steps here. Okay, now let's go ahead and configure this uh, steps for our climbs case type. For collect information, I'm just going to collect the basic details. So I'm not going to touch this. And the investigation, I want to create a child case, right? So I can add a step. There is a step to create case that is under automation. So you can go here and say create case. So as per our design, we decided that investigation will be a child case. So you can use this option and then click select. This will add the automated step here. So automatically we will create child case. Now we have to configure this step. So all this step configuration varies based on the type of step you select. So for create case, you have two options. You can select create case or you can uh, use create child case. So I'm going to create a child case. So I'm selecting this option. Then the next one is till now I created only the climbs request case type. I never created any investigation case type in a real time or how we will be doing is we would have already created a case type of investigation. But Pega also provides an option to create a new case type from here. So let's try that option. Let's say I want to create a new case type and give the case type name as investigation and then create. So Pega by default now it creates a new case type just like how we created climbs request. So now we have now created a new case type but with little configuration. Maybe you can now refresh this case type and there you will see now the investigation case type has been already created. Now you can select the option of investigation as the child case. You also have different configuration items here, but I'm not going to go much detail because we have a separate lecture on child cases. Currently, what I did here is I created a new step to create a case for approval reject flow. We have to create an approval step. So that is also out of the box. Click on approve reject that will open up a new step of approve reject. And here you can define the configurations for the approval again. Approval is a separate lecture, so let's keep it simple. I'm not going to update any configuration. Just let it look like this. And then in the payment settlement, let's say this gets assigned to an end user who does the payment. So there is some user action is needed. So I will add just collect information to collect some basic information before 
sending out the payment. So this is how you are going to design a case lifecycle. You start with stages, define all your stages. Then under stages, you start with defining the processes. So it's not like every stage should contain only one process. You can have multiple process and then under multiple process, you can define steps for each process. Let's also define one more process for the collect information. Let's say we have some kind of requirement to perform some duplicate check before we proceed to the investigation stage. So from here, I will add a new process. And then that does duplicate check. That will be my process name. And here as a step, Pega also provides an automated duplicate check automation step. So I'm going to include that. So go to automation, search duplicate cases, and then select it. Now let's save this case. Let's look at one more configuration in the case designer that is alternate stage. So what does alternate stage means? So in a case life cycle, always you will not have a happy path. You will always have some kind of negative path, right? Let's take an example of approval reject. So in approval, approve is the positive path and reject is the negative path or an alternate stage. So Pega by default, whenever you added any approve reject step, then it adds an alternate stage as rejected. So you see approval rejected and it also resolved the case as resolve completed. So you can also change the status to resolve rejected, but we'll see it later about that. But the thing is like you can have different alternate stages and you can jump from any of the primary stage into alternate stage. So if you look into the approve reject flow at some point of time when the user has rejected the case then automatically we jump from here to here we will not go to the next step but we make a jump into the alternate stage there is one work step that helps to in achieving this so that work step we call it as change stage usually change stage helps to change to some different changes so here you can say if you add a change stage here then you can say to which stage you want to jump under some condition you can jump to approval rejection stage so just for showing i have exhibited this but there is some automation step which you can use to either go to next stage or you can jump to any stage if you want now as a recap we defined the stages the happy stages and also the alternate stage then we defined processes for each stages then under the processes we defined steps i will end this video here see you in the next video